Oh, it's okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Wednesday, the 26th day of October in the year 2022. This is a regular meeting of the Jersey City Municipal Council. We had a scheduled 6 p.m. start. The clock on my cell phone is showing 6.02 p.m. May we have a roll call for the commencement of this meeting? Councilperson Ridley? Here. Councilperson Prinzeri? Here. Councilperson Baggiano? Here. Councilperson Soleil? Here. Councilperson Solomon? Here. Councilperson Gilmore? Present. Councilperson DeGeese? Here. Council President Pro Temp Rivera? Present. And the Council President Warneman will be absent for the entirety of the meeting. Okay. We have eight council members in attendance at 6.02 p.m. May we kindly rise for a moment of silence, please. Oh, Colleen Stoll. Thank you very much. On behalf of Council President Pro Temp Rivera, in accordance with New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the posting on the bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall, the annual notice, which is the schedule of meetings and caucuses of the Municipal Council for the calendar year 2022 and filed in the Office of the City Clerk on Thursday, October 28, 2021. In addition, at the time of its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, October 21st, 2022 at 3.26 p.m. to the Municipal Council, Mayor, Business Administrator, Corporation Council, and the local newspapers and posted on the city's website so I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. Uh, please be advised that we are now live streaming all city council caucuses and meetings through Microsoft Teams. The links are located on our website and also on the agenda. So with that, before we move into our regular scheduling programming, I believe we have a motion to defer. To grab the item. 10.4 yep. <laughs> to item 10.4. That's good. Hold on one second. Uh, resolution 22 757, which is a resolution honoring Robinson Holloway and Art Fair 14C for their contribution to Jersey City's dynamic art artist community and for their role in developing and spotlighting our local artistic talent. So we have a motion by Councilperson Solomon, and I believe we have a second by Councilperson Soleil to defer to item 10.4, resolution 22-757. Councilperson Ridley. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. Councilperson Solomon, would you like to read the resolution into the record? Sure, thank you. Um, so the resolution is entitled, the resolution honoring Robinson Holloway and Art Fair 14C 
for their contribution to Jersey City's dynamic artist community, for their role in developing and spotlighting our local artistic talent. And I will read the resolution. Whereas the city of Jersey City is proud to recognize the impact and achievements of our great and diverse art community, and whereas Art Fair 14C operates as a nonprofit, expanding public access to fine art and activating under-recognized art regions, acting as executive director and founder, Robinson Holloway, alongside her team, work to ensure the ongoing support of artists through the public access and support of their craft. And whereas Art Fair 14C provides affordable subsidized spaces for spotlighting regional talent and the diversity of artists around the world. Beyond providing a space to sell and exhibit the work of these artists, Art Team 14C creates vast opportunities and connections for artists, therefore strengthening and inspiring careers in artistry. Whereas Art and whereas Art Fair 14C has activated Jersey City as a leading arts destination and directly inspires local artists to pursue limitless imaginings of their voice and purpose in their artwork by providing the support for artistic professional development through elaborate networks of artists and artistic residencies. And whereas Art Fair 14C has exhibited dedication to supporting and strengthening the entire visual arts ecosystem that encompasses individual artists themselves, local Jersey City art groups, and small art galleries and art museums. And I will save the last sentence for later. So before we invite anyone up, we'd like to take a vote on resolution 22-757. Councilperson Ridley. Uh, I'm going to vote aye and thank you for all that you're doing in Jersey City for the arts community. Councilperson Prinzeri. So Robinson, from your work um, advocating for the Arts and Culture Trust Fund going back many years now, um, for all of the work that you have done in advocating for artists as part of the Arts Council and then now 14C and also help establishing a culture of collectors and collecting, which is really important for our artists here in Jersey City. Vote aye. Congratulations. Councilperson Bagiano. I vote aye. Councilperson Soleil. I want to vote aye and thank you, Robinson, for highlighting and celebrating and you know lifting up all the artists in our community and getting Jersey City to be such a cultural hub uh, for artists everywhere. Thank you. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. I, I was joking with Robinson that a resolution is tougher than a proclamation because we all have to vote. We're all on the record, but I think I think it's going to go go smoothly. So um, you know, it, it's just been amazing to see. Um, you know, the extraordinary advocacy that Robinson's done, as Councilman Prinzeri said, for 14C, uh, for um, first the Arts uh, Trust Fund uh, and having, you know, rallies here in, in 2016, 2017, um, and now it's in existence. And then to see how much 14C has grown uh, from, you know, starting in the hotel to now being in the armory um, this coming year, and it's coming up in a few weeks. So we're excited uh, to showcase all the extraordinary artistic talent of Jersey City, New Jersey, and across the globe that is going to be on display there. Uh, so we are deeply grateful for everything you've done, Robinson, and uh, excited to see what more will come in the future. And so with that, I proudly vote aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Councilperson DeGees. I vote aye and thank you for your contributions to the city and hope that it inspires others to do the same. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Continue doing great, an amazing job. I vote aye. Resolution 22-757 is approved 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. Robinson, if you'd like to say a few words, you are welcome to do so, and then I'll come give you the resolution. Thank you all. Um, Can you just raise the mic up to you? There you go. Got it. Um, Excellent. Thank you. I honestly believe that it is because I came to Jersey City that this fair exists, that Jersey City is a unique place in the world, and I have been proselytizing the arts in Jersey City, in Manhattan, and statewide, and people are very excited about what's happening in Jersey City. All the arts, the Pompidou coming, and 14C. I think it's going to be great, and I appreciate the support that this city council and the city has given to the arts. 
because of the Arts Trust, we are able to have Art Fair 14C be completely free to the public on Friday. And let me tell you, they are taking advantage of that. We have a lot of tickets that have already been taken for Friday. And I hope you all will be able to attend. It's really going to be extraordinary. And um, thank you very much for how much this city supports the arts. I have been to a lot of other cities around this state and around this country. And it's not an easy thing. People say they support the arts, but actually supporting the arts is a very different thing. And Jersey City is a leader in that and I hope continues to be a leader. Thank you. Capturing the photo op. Okay. Starting a meeting on a high note. That's great. That means we got to end on a high note, too. All right. <clears throat> Back to our regular scheduling programming, on to our first reading ordinances. If you would allow me to read them into the record. Item 3.1, City Ordinance 22-090, is an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City to adopt the 6th Street Embankment Redevelopment Plan. Item 3.2, City Ordinance 22-091, is an ordinance amending chapter 254 property maintenance article 3 administration section 17 notes and hearings establishing a procedure for the abatement of conditions affecting health and safety within dwell excuse me rental dwellings excuse me I, item 3.3 city ordinance 22-092 is an ordinance supplementing chapter 332 vehicles and traffic article 2 traffic regulations Section 332-5, one-way streets for Morgan Street. Item 3.4, City Ordinance 22-093 is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 332-5, one-way streets for Union Street. And last but not least, item 3.5, City Ordinance 22-094 is an ordinance amending Chapter 84 of the Municipal Code of Jersey City to limit the number of cannabis Class 5 retail licenses to be issued. Council members, I'm going to be taking a vote on items 3.1 through 3.5. Councilperson Ridley. Uh, I'm going to vote aye for all with the um, 3.5, I know that uh, we have some questions and concerns, but since it's first read, um, I'm hoping that we can work those things out before second reading. So I'm going to vote aye for all. Should I wait? Uh, Council, just uh, an update on that. Um, so Maynard did provide some statistics that I'm willing to work with you guys before second reading. Um, but just for the record, we had roughly 55 applicants so far. So that's kind of where the number was tied into. Um, the board had approved a 23 um, licenses so far and 19 of those 23 were labeled as diverse, whether it be women, uh, minority, um, whatever um, class. So um, that's kind of where we, we came from with the data, but we'll, we'll talk to the council more in uh, uh, conversation. We'll bring Maynard back prior to any uh, second readings. Okay, Councilperson Prinzeri. Hi for introduction and also with 3.5, I know we've had some um, people reach out to the council with suggestions as well. We can have that conversation to see how and if we can incorporate them. Sorry, quick, can I pause for a second? After this, would you be able to make the motion on um, 3.3 and 3.4? Okay, great. Um, Councilperson Baggiano. 
Yeah, uh, I'll vote yes on all of them. I just spoke to Maggie about 3.1, and uh, I changed my opinion from the other night at the caucus meeting. 3.5, I'm voting no. I 55 pot places throughout Jersey City, I think is a disgrace and a shame. Councilperson Soleil. Uh, I'm going to vote I for all and on 3.5. I want to uh, commit to the fact that this is an ongoing conversation. You know, we don't know if it's going to be 55, um, but definitely want to encourage transparency when it comes with the numbers and celebrate the fact that, you know, 19 out of the 23 are considered diverse. And also if we can look into making sure at least 50, I mean, it's not a problem right now, but making sure at least 50% of any licenses moving forward are uh, for minority owned businesses. And, you know, that we continue to help the people who were most desperately impacted by, you know, the war on cannabis. And with that, I vote aye on all and aye for introduction. Thank you. Councilperson Solomon. Aye for introduction. Councilperson Gilmore. Um, well, I, I for introduction, um, 3.5, as everyone says, it's going to have to be a little more dialogue just so we can see how the equity is as it relates to uh, these dispensaries gone in each ward, um, just to make sure affected communities um, are part of this. Um, so I have a close eye on 3.5. Councilman, uh, to your request at the caucus meeting, we're working on plotting it on a map just so you can see it. OK, Councilperson DeGees. I vote aye for introduction, but we'll reiterate the um, issues with 3.5. I think that we have to have more further discussions on that. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. I vote aye. Okay, if you allow me just to recap items 3.1 through 3.4 are approved 8-0 with Councilperson Waterman absent. Item 3.5 is introduced, excuse me, 7-1 with Councilperson Baggiano voting no and Council President Waterman absent. So before we move on to our second reading ordinances, I believe we have a motion um, to carry, uh, we'll do them one by one. So ordinance 22-092 item 3.3 to carry it as a second reading for the November 28th Municipal Council meeting. May I have a motion to carry? Motion. motion made by Council Person Prinzeri. Second. Seconded by Council Person Soleil. On the motion to carry city ordinance 22-092 as a second reading ordinance for the November 28th Municipal Council meeting, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0. With Councilperson Waterman absent to carry City Ordinance 22-092 as a second reading ordinance for the November 28th Municipal Council meeting. Next, we also have a motion to carry City Ordinance 22-093 as a second reading ordinance for the November 28th Municipal Council meeting. We have a motion by Councilperson Solomon. Second. And we have a seconded by Councilperson Soleil. On the motion to carry city ordinance 22-093 as a second reading ordinance for the November 28th Municipal Council meeting, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 
with council person Waterman absent to carry city ordinance 22-093 as a second reading ordinance for the November 28th municipal council meeting. Okay. Those motions are out of the way. Now on to our second reading ordinances. First, second reading ordinance, item 4.1, city ordinance 22-8087, excuse me, is an ordinance supplementing chapter 332, vehicles and traffic, article three, parking, standing and stopping, amending section 332-22, parking prohibited at all times on Marin Boulevard. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Just give me one second before you start speaking. I just have to adjust the camera. Okay, if you can just state your name for the record. Ryan Williams. Ryan Williams, yeah. Okay, Ryan, go. Good evening, Council. Uh, I, I wanna express my support and gratitude for ordinances 2287 and 2288 which extend and connect protected bike lanes on Marin Boulevard and Newark Avenue. Uh, I, I rode on both of these areas today. I, I took Marin to get to the ferry in Hoboken and I took Newark Avenue to come here. Marin is a short stretch, less than a quarter mile or th the part that we're looking at in 2287 uh, that connects Jersey City's bike network to Hoboken's. A route is only as safe as its most dangerous link, and for years this has been a missing link between the two cities' networks. A lot of people will be able to get around more safely and stop riding on the sidewalk thanks to this connection on Marin. Uh, Newark Avenue from 5th Street to Brunswick is also part of, uh, part of an important connection between Journal Square and downtown which got a protected bike lane this year. Extending it by a block in this case allows people to safely reach the painted lane on Brunswick, which in turn connects to Christopher Columbus Drive and the rest of our bike lane network. So these are both critical missing links and I want to thank the council and Councilman Solomon in particular and the Department of Infrastructure for making these safety and mobility improvements. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is still a public hearing on city ordinance 22-087. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Hi, uh, same one. My name is Emmanuel Morgan. Emmanuel Morgan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like me to spell that? Please. E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L-L-E. M-O-R-G-E-N. Thank you so much. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. My name is Emmanuel Morgan, and I am a current resident of Jersey City and former resident of Hoboken for 13 years. For at least a year, I commuted by bicycle between Jersey City and Hoboken three times a week. Whether rain or shine and in the snow, I chose this mode because it was faster, cheaper, and because it made sense for me. Sometimes my reason was that it made me feel that I could do something, however small, for the environment. My route took me from Grand Street to Washington Street to 18th Street to Observer Highway. Most of this route was safe because of Jersey City's protected bike lanes, for which I am exceedingly grateful. However, there was one segment, the connection between 18th and Observer on Marin under the rail overpass, that was and still is, and is still terrifying until today. I'm here to say thank you. Thank you for your protection on this particular segment, which I understand was striped today. Prior to today, the segment and its intersections with vehicles frequently turning right on red evoke the kind of fear that makes people on foot, bike, and scooter pause in confusion and try to look every which way, never knowing from where the speeding vehicle might be coming. My partner and I will be sure to ride this segment tomorrow in celebration of progress for safe streets in our community. Thank you again. Thank you. 
This is still a public hearing on city ordinance 22-087. Any other member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Second. Mot motion made by Council President Pro Temp Rivera, seconded by Councilperson Bajiano. On the motion to close the public hearing on city ordinance 22-087, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-087. The final consideration and adoption of Ordinance 22-087, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. City Ordinance 22-087 is adopted 8-0. With Council President Waterman absent. On to our next second reading ordinance, item 4.2, City Ordinance 22-088, is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 3, Parking, Standing and Stopping, amending Section 332-22, Parking Prohibited at All Times, on Newark Avenue. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Motion made by Council President Pro Temp Rivera to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-088. And I had a seconded by Councilperson Bajiano. On the motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-088, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Bajiano. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Council, Person, Council President Waterman absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-088. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-088, Council Person Ridley. Aye. Council Person Prinzeri. Aye. Council Person Bajiano. Council Person Soleil. Aye. Council Person Solomon. I and I also just want to thank um, the mayor, the whole administrative team, um, Director Patel and her team um, did a lot of really great work to get these um, ordinances forward and we'll make our streets significantly safer for bicyclists, but not just for bicyclists, what we've seen when we put these in place is it's safer for everybody, drivers, bicyclists and pedestrians. Uh, so very excited to see these move forward. Thanks. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson. DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. City Ordinance 22-088 is adopted 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. For our last second reading ordinance, item 4.3, City Ordinance 22-089 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Jersey City and the County of Hudson, the State of New Jersey authorizing the acceptance of three condominium units located within the property commonly identified on the tax maps of the city as block 11506 lot 2.01 otherwise known as 151 bay street this is a public hearing on this ordinance any member of the public wishing to be heard please come up to the podium and state your name for the record and i see gene daly just give me one second gene camera and get you started ready to go uh, good evening this is Jean Daly um, my concern is what the city does with these properties and condominiums uh, the last time something like this came before the city was actually for selling them um, I've heard someone say that these units are going to be for office uh, for city offices but my last check with these things I, maybe it was six months ago or a year ago, the city had app, had obviously been sitting on five condominium units. They did nothing with it. 
never house the low income people, never put people in and charge them rent, did nothing for, you remember, right? Sorry, <laughs> she always remembers. Um, did nothing for it, they, they sat vacant and fallow. And that what eventually happened was, after sitting fallow, the city eventually sold them. Now, did they sell them out on the open marketplace? No, they, sell, they sold them through private bidders. Yes, my concern is this exactly what is going to ha happen here. That same process might be repeated. So I would like to have restrictions placed on the use of these three condominiums units because in the end, your average resident is getting uh, the short end of the stick and this is, is unconscionable and is not the best use of uh, properties that we acquire. Um, if we sell them, maybe we don't have to sell the historic firehouse on Bay Street. That's a darn shame. So I think we need to rethink this and put some kind of restrictions on the use of this and um, a time fr uh, frame for that. Thank you. Very much. This is still a public hearing on city ordinance 22-089. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record, please. Motion. Motion made by Council President Pro Temp Rivera to close the public hearing on city ordinance 22-089 and is seconded by Councilperson Baggiano. On the motion to close the public hearing on city ordinance 22-089, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Saleh. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGis. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-089. The final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-089, Councilperson Ridley. Um, BA, just to be clear, this is, uh, these three units are being used as a city theater, right? Donated. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, it's Councilman Zalman's ward, so I'm sure. I'll have to elaborate, but it's, uh, it's an arts theater that's uh, in connection with the redevelopment plan of, of that area and the uh, developers deal. And uh, it's labeled condos because that's how the building is parceled, but um, it is restricted to be used as a public theater. And uh, that theater will also have a board that we're uh, in conversation with councilman uh, about. Okay, aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Yeah, just to clarify, add to what the BA said and to answer Jean's question, it does, if you read the title of the ordinance, it makes it sound like it's kind of housing units, but this is um, the units that are going to make up the 500 seat theater uh, that Toll Brothers was required to build as part of the powerhouse redevelopment plan. Um, and ultimately, I think that the goal is um, to have a, a nonprofit board, and ultimately the nonprofit will. Um, you know, kind of determine the future of the theater, um, but at least in the interim, it, the city will take ownership and then have a board set and then set the direction of the theater in, uh, you know, conjunction with the broader community. With that, I vote aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGis. Aye. Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. City Ordinance 22-089 is adopted 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. Okay, Council Members, before we move on to our public request for a hearing, we do have one order of business to take care of. This is a public hearing on the contractor's pre-qualifications for historic rehabil rehabilitation project for reservoir number three. This um, public hearing was duly advertised in the Jersey Journal on October 3rd, 2022. And I can certify as to our total compliance with the state. This is a state requirement and we do have here our um, 
Brian Weller, who is the Director of Architecture, to answer any questions that you may have. We also have the pre-qualification statement for public view, and when we had that in our office uh, since we did the advertisement for public view. So with that being said, this is a public hearing on the contractor's pre-qualifications for historic rehabilitation project for reservoir number three. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come forward, state your name for the record, Oh, hello, Jean Daly. One second, Jean, I'm sorry. Okay, Jean, ready. Um, yes, I'm probably gonna have to direct questions to Mr. Weller because the documents were not uh, attached to the ordinance or the third, this particular matter. So from what I quickly looked at, it seems that these are just specific requirements for the bidders to, to meet before they're allowed to place a bid. Um, is, there, is there someone who can verify that? Brian, would you mind coming up to um, the podium? Yeah, I need help. <laughs> um, because one of the things I was asking, was thinking about is that there are a lot of contaminations at Reservoir 3 and if the um, that particular bid requirement would include the ability to handle um, contaminated materials. Brian Weller, Director, Division of Architecture. Uh, this is for the historic preservation. Uh, sorry. On the screen house and on the other historic structures. I do have the historic preservation architect here if you need further uh, answers. However, uh, this is strictly for those structures. The site is contaminated and is being remediated with the LSRP in accordance with DEP standards. What? Also, yes, this is to pre-qualify contractors to do the work before it goes out. Do you know? Correct, but what my, my question is actually meaning to for example, this stuff might be covered in lead paint. It might be, you know, something in that materials might um, still be uh, contaminated in some way, um, even just from, you know, rainfall or something like that. And what junk people have left there all, all these many decades. If, if you can just, yeah, if you can just state your name for the record and please spell it for our court reporter, please. Sure, Lisa Easton, L-I-S-A. E-A-S-T-O-N. I'm the preservation architect for the Reservoir 3 project. Thank you. So as part of the scope of work for the project, it would be to remediate any lead or any contaminated material in accordance with DEP regulations and federal regulations. So for this to back up, it's to pre-qualify bidders that are qualified in the craft of preservation and restoration. So it is of the structures and any structures that contain hazardous materials will be dealt with in the specification and the drawings. When do you think um, they'll start, you know, what's the what's the timeline or glide path? Do we have one w within the next year? You can estimate that they would start repairing those two structures at Reservoir 3? Well, we're very excited to get started as soon as possible so that we can use the uh, and, and meet the guidelines and the deadlines for the grant, of course. Um, but we do have a few more hurdles to go through. So I would say definitely within the next year. It, um, it's, it's kind of difficult to put give you a date, but I would say within the next year we'll be on these buildings. Brian, this has been going on for almost two years now, and people in Ward C and Ward D are getting disgusted with it. So please, let's move it on. And also the wall on the uh, Central Avenue side, got to get fixed. All right, Brian? In the Summit Ave. We're, we're working this on it. Not, ha, this doesn't have to do with that, but. No, I know, but let's Brian stick, handles. Let's stick with the ordinance. Yeah, but Brian handles that, uh, that, and please, let's get it done. I might speak to that. We were actually engaged as the architect. The RFP had been awarded uh, in March of 2020. So we started the project during. Is that part of this ordinance? Is that part of this ordinance? It, it's we're, we're still holding a public hearing on this. So 
if we're going to have uh, other conversations regarding something else, let's finish this public hearing and then maybe we can have like a sidebar on the other items that are outstanding in that project. I was just responding to his two year time. No, I know, okay. I know, I know. <laughs> so members of the public, this is still a public hearing on the contractor's pre-qualifications for historic rehabilitation and we have Laverne Webb Washington. Laverne Webb Washington. Yes. I would like to know contractors. Can we bid first with local contractors or it's open to the state? Because I like to know the qualifications of the contractors. And we have a lot of contractors here in Jersey City that need some work. So I know a lot of stuff's been going on and we've been getting a lot of out of state, out of Huston County contractors. And there's a lot of contractors here that need some work. And this is a good opportunity. That's why I want to know the qualifications. That's what I want to add. Thank you. Okay. The, the qualifications are for bidders. And when the RFP is issued, it will go out to the state. So anyone who is qualified can apply. You're welcome. This is still a public hearing. Um, Phil Carrington, would you like to be heard? Even Phil Carrington. I am a black contractor in Jersey City. I'm questioning the qualifications of not only this project, but many projects in Jersey City. As a black contractor, we either your pre qualifications is a buffer or designed to keep certain black people out of business. I'll explain to you why. You have to have $5,000 in escrow of your money. And this will sit for months without you getting any interest on this money. And then you have to have all these different certifications and qualifications for other things, uh, lead movement, uh, uh, P the DEP uh, certifications, etc. What I'm basically saying is that it has become extremely hard for black contractors who have a whole, who doesn't have a big pocket of money to get into this game. And so you need to prove, if not prove, you need to approve some kind of money set aside so that these qualifications, the $5,000 for, uh, you have to have it before the bid, and uh, the startup money that you must have in order to even get in the game. And then you, you get what is called drawdowns, meaning that you have to put your money up. It's hard for a black contractor as it is to even get started, but you get your, you have to put all this money up to get started. And then you get drawdowns. So it's $5,000 in escrow that these clowns are holding. And then you have to pay your salary, pay your people and do all these kind of things. Then you get a drawdown way down the line. So you have to pay back your bank interest on the money that you bore or where you get it from. While these clowns walk around with the grant money that they get up front. And so if they're getting money up front, we shouldn't have to pay a $5,000 or what it is to get into the game. They need to explain to us why we have to have this nonsense of free qualifications and we put money up and then also have to get the startup money to start doing the work. Please explain. I, I have no record of a $5,000 ask for upfront interest by a contractor. The pre-qualifications, there are seven items and they're given to us from the State Historic Preservation Office through the New Jersey Historic Trust the funding arm for which a grant has been given for the Screenhouse and Gatehouse One. The qualifications were reviewed by DCA and also the uh, local government services at the state level. There are seven requirements. All of them in general, if I'll summarize, are to qualify that the craftspeople employed on the job have skill and working. Thank you. Okay. You can finish. In working with the Secretary of the Interior Standards, which is the document by the Federal Government National Park Service that governs historic preservation. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Before they do the homework, they need to, they, before they come here, they need to do the homework. Before you, you going to bid on anything. Phil, I'm sorry, your time Phil. is up, sir. Oh, my time is up? Yes. Phil, your time is up, Phil. But thank okay. you. Let's keep, let's go, Sean. Yes. 
This is still a public hearing. Any member of the member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record, please. Motion. Second. And okay. Hold on one second. We have a motion to close the public hearing by Council President Pro Temp Rivera, seconded by Councilperson Baggiano. The motion to close the public hearing on the contract of pre-qualifications for the historic rehabilitation project for reservoir number three. Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Not here. Um, absent. Okay. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 7 0 with Council Members DeGeese and Council President Waterman absent to close the so public hearing on yeah, the contract of qualifications for historic rehabilitation project for reservoir number three. I'd like to thank both of you for attending and answering the questions. Thank you so much. Didn't mean to put you on the spot, but we do appreciate you uh, coming and attending and answering the questions for the members of the public. Sean? Yes. Councilwoman DeGeese is here. Okay but we already closed the motion. So we are now moving, thank you though. We are moving on to our public request for a hearing. Our first speaker listed is 5.1, Laverne Webb, Washington. Laverne. 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 Laverne, Laverne we're gonna start the clock, Laverne. Just come here. That's part of it. Okay. Got it. You know what? It's shame on us. It's shame on us. I've been in this city 74 years. And I ride around this city today and I cry. I cry real tears. You get me, council people? To see where we came from from 74 years to now. And I used to play down here go crabbing and go fishing and look at it now. It's a baby in New York City. And we then came to, we then came to now where we don't even care about the people that have been here. It's all about a dollar bill, all about, I got a phone call that's coming to my phone now. This guy keeps calling me from Seattle, Washington. He used to live here in Jersey City. He travels back and forth. He went to Journal Square and he looked at the Jackie Robinson statue up there. He sent me $40 money order in my car. He wanted to do a GoFund. He wanted to do a GoFund for me to get some people to go to Journal Square to clean that statue because it meant so much to him as a boy in this city and he's 60 some years old. My grandson played baseball in Georgia and got accepted at college. I told him about this. It's a disgrace. We worry about million dollar buildings and all this. That statue been there. A man uh, broke a color line. A man that did a lot for young kids to encourage them to play baseball. And you guys go up there and look at that statue. And at the next council meeting, you tell me what you think about it. But we riffing and raging about bike rides and this and that. Let's not lose the quality of life. I went just the other day, I made 200 applications for coats. Four days ago, they filled out. I go around this city, I don't go on Instagram on that. I don't know how to use one of them. I don't have time. I got a flip phone. I go ride around this city. The things I do in this city, I don't do them for Laverne. A lady seen me that she said, Miss, my granddaughter had a boy go to school up here on Ship Avenue. They had to buy him sneakers. He was from another country. She said, can you buy him a jacket for me? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I might can bring him down to the church down there in Ward A on MLK. I said, but we'll make arrangements for him to get his coat. Thank you. You can have the rest of it. But think about the least in this city. 
Okay, our next speaker 5.2, Robert Knapp. I don't see Robert. Okay, next speaker 5.3, Howard Lebowski. Good evening, council members. My name is Howard Lebowski. I'm going to let's sum this up to make a quick synopsis of Jersey City. I've been living here 64 years, and my father's concern is now my concern. I live on Stegman Parkway. It's a major thoroughfare by PS38. <clears throat> the mayor's office doesn't think that justice in Jersey City is, is a word that exists today. And if the council doesn't do anything about what I'm about to tell you, then it's true, and I'll take other means to inform the residents that Jersey City, and in the midst of its growing pains, has selective justice as it deems necessary or what it wants to do when it wants to do it. On my street, Stegman Parkway is PS38. When they pick up their children, they park on the right side of the street, they park on the left side of the street. You could not get an ambulance down that block if somebody was having a heart attack. You couldn't get a fire truck down that block when the school let out if somebody's building was on fire. If my property or I had a heart attack, I'd be suing Jersey City for violation of your ordinances. It specifically says in the ordinance for parking, I don't have the number because I unfortunately left it at home, that the, par the Department of Safety, I don't know who that is in Jersey City, but the Department of Safety has the responsibility of removing cars that are impeding an ambulance company or a fire truck and you do nothing on the street of Stegman Parkway. I propose to the council Issue somebody to all the family members. Look, you're allowed to park on the right side of the street to pick up your children. Only the right side of the street. If you park on the left side of the street, you will be issued a ticket instantaneously. The police will not get involved with this. That's fine. We have a parking authority. For a week straight, five days a week, after you tell everybody in Jersey City, all, all the parents, you can't park on let's say the left side of the street, have the parking authority down there with somebody between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m. every single day. No excuses. You're on the left side of the street, you get a ticket. The city will get revenue, and the people will learn, keep the street clean in case of emergency. But nothing gets done. I go to the mayor's office. I don't know. I wish the mayor was here because I turned right to his face. You don't believe in justice. Do I have to send a letter to Jersey City, uh, the uh, Jersey Journal? Because I'll do that. Do I have to post on multi-media websites that through Jersey City's growing pains, we have, again, selective justice. We do what we want to do when we want to do it. I brought this up. Somebody parked. Sorry, Alan. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Mr. Lebowski. Um, if you can see my aide, Brittany Kelly, she'll get your contact information so we can follow up with you to talk to the parking authority, but also to the school. Okay, our next speaker, 5.4, Jean Daly. Who's got glasses in the glasses? Oh, Laverne. All right. Uh, okay, I'm ready to go. Ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is Jean Daly again. Um, I actually can kind of pick up on what some of that guy's uh, referencing and the fact that this city doesn't follow its own rules, doesn't enforce its own rules, and often doesn't follow state rules or federal rules. And the sad thing is, if you're an example, you're supposed to follow the rules. And this what ends up happening is that people of Jersey City have to sue their own city, which is really misfortunate. Um, I'm going to speak to a couple things right now. Recently, the, um, the IZO overlay ordinance, I want to tell you something that I've learned poking around, that the zoning board cannot change any ordinance or change any rezoning unless four critical elements of our new master plan is in place. It is the land use element, the housing plan element, relationship with other plans, 
and the statement of purpose. Jersey City only currently has two of these elements completed. Hello, thank you, please. They only have two of these elements completed. So technically zoning could not put forth, this is state law, could not put forth a new ISO ordinance. Why are we letting this happening? To happen, excuse me. Why are we doing nothing? Why is our own town violating the state laws? We haven't had any of these certain sections that we haven't had have not been updated in 20 years. Yet by law, it's required every six years. So currently, our zoning board does not have the authority to have proffered that late, latest IZO overlay, and they possibly could not have proffered the original IZO, uh, which was done earlier this year or end of last year. Um, but I'm going to go uh, again to this, um, not find the, their own rules. Um, with construction down in Exchange Place. The Exchange Place Alliance is supposed to have been granted by ordinance a uh, contractor of record in order to do any type of construction in Exchange Place. This council has never granted Exchange Place Alliance contractor of record. They were never given that status. So we again are violating our own laws. And what does that law do? I mean, the. If you have a contractor of record, that indemnifies the city from any wrongdoing. So now the city is still on the hook. And I also say there's been, as an aside, that monument has not been protected. There are bite marks and teeth marks now on the bottom steps where the diggers have bit away at it. No one's taking care of that. And the Thank jackhammers you. have Thank destroyed you. portions of it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, 5.5, .5, Beatrice Bofill. Beatrice? No. Next, uh, 5.6, Emmanuel Morgan. Left. Next speaker, Phil Petroselli. Phil Petruzzelli. I think so. I live uh, downtown Jersey City. Do you need an address or anything? No, we're good. Thank you. Okay. And I've been a resident here for well over 20 years, and I'm very disappointed in the city council and the city itself. You claim to represent the people. However, recently, I'll say very recently, we had a tax increase of 30% with little increase in services. Um, we have uh, people that are afraid to drive anymore on our streets because they're afraid of bicyclists that do not follow the rules. They go one way the wrong way. They don't stop at stop signs. There's no enforcement. You talk about rules that Jean just said, you don't even have rules for to help the people that are here that walk where they can get run over by people. In fact, you don't even know how to bill correctly initially. My tax bill went up about 248% from August 1st. Now, it turned out to be, thanks to Councilman Gilmore, a mistake. But what are you doing here to verify that it hasn't not only happened to me, but it happened to somebody else? You know, you're trying to give my wife a heart attack and she's got heart problems. 248%. You guys should be ashamed of yourself because you're not managing what's going on. And you're supposed to be setting uh, the examples here. How about getting the people to vote on the budget, whether it's school, county, or local budget? Give it, let the people make a decision on what you're doing on. Because obviously you don't seem to be able to re represent the people if we're doing a 38 per, or 30 percent plus vote. And that's on top of an, what, an eight, nine percent inflation rate. You're telling people like me who's retired, living on a retirement income, to move out. That's what's coming across to me. On that. And then um, it's not affordable anymore. And then you're not setting the example. We've got a council person, Amy DeGees, who said who has been indicted, I believe, 
who I don't know, something where still representing her people. But is she setting the example where she's, I believe she admittedly hit somebody and didn't stop, but is still on the board. And she can be on the board, but I don't think she should vote or represent the people until she's either being cleared or um, the case is solved. Set the example to the people that are here, that live in here, that you want to live here, that you want here. Don't force people out that have been here a long time residents or even new ones that are getting a 20 or 30 percent increase in their uh, monthly rent because of what's going on, whether it's taxes or just because people can raise the rent, they do it. To me, it's not a nice place to live anymore. Okay, our next speaker, 5.8, Rafael Corona. Good evening, Rafael Corona. I'm a social equity applicant from your city for a conditional license, and I want to just thank you guys all for having me here today. I also want to thank you for uh, saying no to the ordinance today as well, and uh, looking out for me and those others that are social equity for the ordinance uh, 22-094. Thank you. Um, not much for me to say because you guys didn't speak on it, but I'm glad that you're looking out for me and all the other people that have been affected by the war on drugs. Thank you so much. And I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. OK, our next speaker, 5.9, Sarah Russell. Sarah Russell. No. Next, 5.10, Mary Ann Riggins. Mary Ann, no? Okay, next, 5.11, Barbara Armstrong. No? Okay, next, Philip Carrington. Council President Rotan Rivera, members of the City Council, and to the moderator of the record. My name is Phil Carrington. My issue today is, as it has been for the last four months, a simple issue corruption and or criminal unethical behavior on the part of the cultural affairs and the public safety director. They need to be fired or arrested. See, I've been here time and time again asking a simple question. In order for you to uh, be even considered to run a festival, there is a bar. So all of that questions, all of that questions, I passed that. And then I got, I got approved four times. Health license, uh, festival license, everything that's required. And then I got disapproved based on nothing. I asked the question time and time again, what was the purpose for the rejection or the basis? I cannot get an answer. But I also spoke to Council Radima and she said that she could not let um, they come here to address the issue because it's personal. That's not really true, it's constitutional. And I am a constituent. All I should have done is to come here and mention I have a problem with the directors. And when the directors come here for the caucus meeting, the questions should be asked. And again, I wrote everybody a letter and the only person that responded to me was uh, Frank G um, Gilmore. See, in order for them to enforce the law, you are the lawmakers. The laws are made on the men by you. If there is no law, how could they be enforcing a law? And the reason why uh, they cannot answer, Christian Goodman and Bill O'Donnell, is because it's not law, it's a scam. But I heard a chatter that the reason why it was rejected, I haven't had anything written as of yet, is because they said, well, Martin Luther King is a main driver. That's a lie. Because if you put that in writing, somebody's going to pay. As a matter of fact, I've exhausted all of my um, reasons to be here and to get an answer. I haven't gotten an answer as of yet. And if I don't get an answer tonight, somebody's going to answer it. All of you all. But my, my point is, they were saying that Martin Luther King Drive is the main thoroughfare and they couldn't give me permission. I was requesting Oak Street to 
union for the festival. They got denied. The next month, Angie McKnight had Oak Street to festival to Forest, and she was approved. I paid taxes on six parts of the property on Martin Luther King Drive. I'm a black man from the West Indies, and that's the reason why I was disapproved. I haven't seen it in writing. I need that in writing. What the, what's the purpose or the basis for the rejection? It's simple. It's not based on law. Thank you, Phil. And our last speaker, 5.13, Raphael Wakefield. Good evening, counselors. This is Raphael Wakefield. I still live in Ward B. And uh, yeah, I'm here for the same reason I've been here ever since Amy DeGeese hit that bicyclist and didn't stop. Your presence on this council is a disgrace. You don't belong here. You continue to embarrass the city. I uh, see shortly after the last meeting, the city, some wag apparently in the mayor's office, had the city apply for a grant for bicycle friendly community from the League of American Bicyclists. You know, it's, it's kind of awkward is what I'm saying. You to still be here, still doing your thing, acting like everything is normal. And that maybe if you keep your head down long enough, it will go away. I assure you it will not. It continues to fester. And the only conceivable defense I can think of for your actions, and by actions, I don't mean the hit and run, I mean your subsequent behavior, is that the standards for public officials in this state have been so very low. But change has to start somewhere. Let change start at home. Let it start with you, Amy DeGeese. Please resign now. Okay. Now, moving on to petitions and communications. Any questions or comments on items 6.1 through 6.19? Hearing none, Office of Communications, any questions or comments on items 7.1 through 7.12? Hearing none, and questions or comments on Report of Directors 8.1. On to our meeting claims and addendum number one. So council members are going to be taking a vote on claims and addendum number one. Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Claims in addendum number one are approved 8-0. Would Councilperson, excuse me, Council President Waterman absent. On to our resolutions. K Council members, I'm going to be taking a vote on items 10.1 through 10.12, with the exception of 10.4, which was approved earlier. Again, items 10.1 through 10.12, with the exception of 10.4, which was approved earlier. Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye for all. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Sorry. Um, no on 10.2 and I on the rest. Oh wait, we're going to 1012. Yes, sir. All right, no on 108. And for 106, want to thank the administration for lowering the amount to 300,000. And you know, they should come early and come often if they want you know, materials or uniforms or whatever it is, especially public safety. And we need to keep a tight grip on our money. That's all. I on the rest. Just to make sure I recorded the vote correctly, you're voting no on items 10.2 and 10.8 and I on all the rest, correct? Yes. Thank you. Councilperson Solomon. Uh, aye for all. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. I just want to comment on 10.3. It's the 85th anniversary of the National Apprenticeship Act and the eighth anniversary of National Apprenticeship Week, which isn't until November. But it gives us some time to um, put our plans together to celebrate and honor industry, labor, and workforce, and the proven model of an apprenticeship program. Council President Pro Temp Rivera. 
Aye. Okay, if I can just recap, item 10.1 is approved 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. Item 10.2 is approved 7-1 with Council Person Soleil voting no and Council President Waterman absent. Items 10.3 through 10.7 are approved 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. Item 10.8 is approved 7-1 with Council Person Soleil voting no and Council President Waterman absent. And items 10.9 through 10.12 are approved 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. On to our next set of resolutions, items 10.13 through 10.22. Again, that's items 10.13 through 10.22. Council Person Ridley. The 22? Yes. Okay. Abstain on 18 and 19, aye on all the rest. 18 and 19, abstaining and aye on all the rest. Got it. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye for all. Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Soleil. Um, I just want to know where are we with the lawsuits? Are they close to being resolved? Like where are we at? I would say there, there's there are a different variety of all the stages. I can update you um, after the meeting, but they're they're all still in the discovery phase right now. Okay. All right, I'll vote aye for all. Okay. Councilperson Solomon. No on 1017 and then aye on all the rest. No on 1017 and aye on all the rest, got it. Councilperson Gilmore. 13 through. <laughs> 13 through 10.22. Peter, um, this, um, um, I'm clear that to these amounts, um, uh, date present are what we spent early, correct? Uh, that's correct. Then the amount at the end, um, in a, I guess, specifically for 1020, um, the total amount, if if it shall pass, will be two ten. So we'll go from one hundred five, I mean one hundred two to two ten. I mean, that would be only if we are required to, for whatever reason, because of expenses, if it goes up to that amount. Oh, it can go up to that. Amount. Right. In, in all likelihood, it will fall substantially below that. All right. Um. Goodness gracious! I just really wish we. Could, you know what? I'm just I'm um gonna abstain on 17, 18, 19, 20, 19, 20. I'm gonna ups oh excuse me. I'm gonna abstain on um 17, 18, 19, and 20. I just think with with the way these legal fees are are going right now in our current climate with the increase of taxes and all that crazy stuff. I, I just don't feel comfortable um, with regards to extending these um, contracts and these amounts is, is really high. Um, so I'll vote aye on the rest and I'll abstain on 17, 18, and 19. And, and you did you did say 20 as well. And 20, Sean. Yes, yeah, 17, 18, and 19, and uh, 20. Got it. Sir. Sir, you cannot speak. You cannot do that. Okay. And I and all the rest, caress? Yes. Okay. Councilperson DeGis. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Okay. If I can just recap, just bear with me. So item 10, items 10.13 through 10.16 are approved 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. Item 10.17 is approved 7-1. No, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, 6-1-1. It's approved 6-1-1. One with Council Person Solomon voting no and Council Person Gilmore abstaining. 
Item 10.18 is approved 602. Would Council Members Ridley and Gilmore abstaining? And Council President Waterman absent. Item 10.19 is approved 602. Would Council Members Ridley and Gilmore abstaining? And Council President Waterman absent. And item 10.20 is approved 701. Would Council Person Gilmore abstaining? And Council President Waterman absent. Items 10.21 and 10.22 are approved 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent. On to the balance of our resolutions, items 10.23 through 10.26. Again, we're voting on items 10.23 through 10.26, which is the balance, remaining balance of our resolutions. Councilperson Ridley. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye for all. Councilperson Baggiano. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Regarding 1025, I'm going to vote no. Um, there needs to be a statute of limitations regarding the erroneous uh, assessments or being able to claw back that money. They should have come back sooner. And also the tax assessor's office needs to start assessing things properly, you know, so that we can reduce the amount of money we keep giving out um, and eye on the rest. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Oh, I on all. I'm voting no on on 25. Um, I think we have to figure out a better mechanism to allow a certain date to reclaim funds that's been over uh, overpaid. So I'll vote I on all and uh, no on 25. Thank you, Councilperson Dejis. 10.23. I work for the district. Okay. I will say that it is um, a very nice opportunity for anyone who wants to be a Jersey City firefighter and signed up to take the test and that the Jersey City Fire Department that are helping to coordinate this prep program cannot get the names of any of those applicants. So it's hard to do some outreach. If anyone knows anyone who put in for the test, there are free prep classes available, but I on all abstaining on 10.23. Thank you. And Council President Pro Tempore Rivera. I'll abstain on 10.23, I on the rest. Okay. If I can just recap, be kind enough to let me recap. So item 10.23 is approved 602. Would council members DeGis and Council President Pro Temp Rivera abstaining and Council President Waterman absent. Item 10.24 is approved 8-0. Council President Waterman absent. Item 10.25 is approved 6-2. Would Council Members Soleil and Gilmore voting no. And Council President Waterman absent. And 10.26 is approved 8-0. Before we take a motion to adjourn. I believe the business administrator would like to address the city council. Yeah, just real quick council. Uh, I know Councilman Solomon's been adamant about asking about the 245 contract. Um, we are bringing it at uh, the next council meeting. Um, there's just some language we had to clean up that we were going back and forth with the union and uh, legal uh, team with. So um, it will be forthcoming in the next two weeks. Motion and, to and adjourn. Hold on. Before we adjourn too, I just wanted to say again, I said it at the caucus, but I get, I'm a, a little bit of a bragger when it comes to our, our softball. We won the Mayor's Cup, uh, the Office of the City Clerk, the Law Department, and our city messengers teamed up and uh, took the Mayor's Cup home. So congratulations to... Uh, Sean, Sean, that's only because you and I were not there. I was going to say... <laughs> Sean, 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 I do have to say, in, in sports, there's something called the Ewing theory, which means the team plays better when the, the leader has left. So I want to suggest that might have been at play. Oh, I was coaching virtually. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. With that being said, uh, we may have a motion to adjourn at 7.20 p.m. Motion was made by Second. Council President Pro Temp. Rivera, I believe the second was made by council person DeGis. Yes. All right, I'm starting to get that voice. <laughs> All right, on the motion to adjourn at 7.20 p.m., council person Ridley. Council person Prinzeri. Aye. 
Councilperson Baggiano. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. And Council President Pro Temp Rivera. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Council President Waterman absent to adjourn at 7.20 p.m. Thank you so much, everyone watching at home and everybody in attendance. Remember, teamwork makes the dream work. And have a great night. Stay safe, everyone.